Hello, art friends. Hi, art friends. It's me. And it's my voice, Steph. Life is short and so am I. How have you been doing? <laughs> First of all, we should apologise. We didn't do a video last week, which was my fault because I was really ill and it turns out I had a... Uh, Adam a thing... had a tongue rash. <laughs> Don't it, was, it was more than just that. It was a thing called strep throat. So I'm taking a lot of pills Antibiotics to now. feel better. So that's why you didn't get a video last week. If you want to be angry, direct your anger at me. And please pray for me that I'm not going to catch it because I've had that in the past and it did not treat me kindly. So let's all wish Steph good health right now. <laughs> So a lot of people have said for a while that they've missed like our doodles and tea style videos. Doodles and tea. <laughs> Which, you know, I'm not completely closed off to the idea of ever doing another one of those. That's true, yes. But I was interested in maybe trying to put something together that's maybe a bit more podcast kind of style in how we talk to each other. But still draw stuff, which you'll be seeing on screen right now. Yeah, so we can record like some drawings or whatever and then we can just sort of have like a chat and overlay on top yeah, of it. Yeah, because also because the last time we did something like this we were talking about like the death of the channel and I don't want that to be the only <laughs> one that we ever do. You know, I want to do one which is a bit more lighthearted and happy. Yeah, so we've been thinking of like other ideas for like topics and things that we'd be interested in talking about. Do you want to know what the number one topic for doing this is? What? It's so dang hot right now. Yeah, I think a heat wave has been going across like most of Europe. And, and I'm sweating and I look gross and you don't want to see that. I think I read it's even in like parts of America and stuff as well. Like the algorithm would take one look at my sweaty face and demonetize <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> so when we normally like film in the bedroom, we have like a big studio light thing to help light up the room. That cooks me like a rotisserie chicken. That is the side effect of it. It is also kind of an oven. <laughs> When it gets to like July and August, especially with this heat wave, I think it, we've got to like break in point. So until the weather starts to cool off a little bit, that might be when you next see our faces. But if you didn't know, in England we don't really have air like conditioning. Air con yeah, because houses in the UK are designed, well in the UK, I don't know about Europe, but English houses are designed to trap in heat. Yeah, like. My grandparents, for example, they paid like good money to get all this kind of form stuff put in the walls yeah. so it like keeps the heat in. So like your grandparents are like, I paid good money for this foam, suck it up kid. Which, you know, it's great in like winter when it's keeping you slightly a few degrees warmer than what it is outside. But in summer, it's like being suffocated indoors. <laughs> when I'm being a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> I wanted to just talk about some new like art things that are going on as well because it, since it's sort of like a little update kind of thing I thought it'd be nice to sort of talk about all kinds of little things that are going on in It needs life. an official name like Artcast so that probably Oh my god no that that's probably so already generic exists. Doodlecast Poddoodle <laughs> No <laughs> That's brilliant Poddoodle no. It sounds like a disease <laughs> It sounds terrible You've got the Poddoodle Adam received a bunch of like art supplies earlier on today because he did a cult pens order. I did. Maybe it'd be nice if in the footage that we, because we haven't recorded the footage at the time of recording the audio, it might be nice if we use some of those art supplies. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. I've got some new pens that I want to use. Yeah, and you've got like some scissors. Not that you'll really get a chance to use those in like an art. <laughs> do, do you want me to like do an example of sampling the scissors, just like <laughs> cutting some paper? <laughs> wow! It. <laughs> wow! Another thing that has completely changed my art life this morning is that Adam discovered that there's an app on a phone called uh, the Copic app and you can like store like all the different Copic pens that you've got. Yeah, there's an app that's made by Copic themselves and you can basically keep track of all the pens you've got. So if you find yourself lacking in any tones or colours and stuff, it'll like visibly show you. It's really cool. Well, I've heard people talk about this kind of stuff, but I'm very slow with technology. Yeah, but I got there eventually. Bit of a grandma. <laughs> and it, this thing has changed my life. It took me a, a hot minute to figure out how to work it. But it's so organised now. Yeah, and now I'm scared I'm going to buy more Copics because now I know which ones I'm missing. That's probably why they've made it. Yeah. <laughs> to be imagine. like, you need more. <laughs> Okay, now that we've introduced the whole like premise of what this even is, because people might be confused what this is. Welcome to Pod Doodle. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, just suggest a name. <laughs> Help like, us. Names, <laughs> yeah. It can't be Doodles and Tea, obviously, but if you have a name similar or something like that, let us know. Teas and Doodle. <laughs> Teas and Doodle. <laughs> <laughs> Teas and Doodle. 
Cheese Ander. That sounds wrong, actually. <laughs> so, the meat of this podcast. The Let's meat. get into the meat. Get into the meat. <laughs> Something I've wanted to talk about on this channel for a very, very long time. It's is... mate! <laughs> Not exactly. Oh. I wanted to talk about Art Block. Oh, Christ. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons why it hasn't been brought up until now, because it seems to have been a very controversial topic within, like, the art community. But Steph's got the meat to set you all straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think every person's opinion is going to very differently on what art block even is oh, or of course. if it exists or yeah. if it doesn't like exist so before i sort of give like my definition of what i believe art block is i want to hear your perspective what it is because we've never had a conversation like this before. well i believe it doesn't exist <laughs> oh my god <laughs> no that's ridiculous <laughs> of course it does like you're always gonna have days where like for me it's kind of like Oh, I can't really be bothered today. Oh, I have no ideas. That's I think that's a common one, right? You want to draw. You want to draw. But you can't think of anything. And you've got the blank page yeah, in front of you. Yeah, you know, that's a really... That hits home with me quite a lot. And when I feel that way, you know, that's when you go to, like, Pinterest or go for a walk and maybe you'll get an idea. <laughs> you know, basically, if you want to draw but you got no ideas, I feel like you have to get away from where you draw and do stuff first. It reminds me actually of, you know, um, I don't know if you ever experienced it when you were in school where you go to be writing an assignment and you get to like the first line and you're like, what do I write? Like, <laughs> oh, this like, is my homework. Like, <laughs> yeah, art, art block is like that question in an exam that says explain your answer. Yeah, <laughs> like, and then your ah! mind just goes entirely blank. Like, I know the answer, but I don't know how to explain it. One of like the things that I see as sort of a counter argument about whether like art block's real or not, because I'm very strongly on the side that I do believe in the art block being a thing. Yeah. Is people saying things like, well, you've still got like a working wrist, therefore, if your wrists can like draw, that's not art block. Just, just for the record, the way you've worded that, I do believe art block exists. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a thing from that kind of standpoint. Mm. But would you say to someone who doesn't have any arms, but they're very creative with the feet, that they're art blocked because? Well, they're no, not using... they're yeah. you know they're express they're still expressing themselves, albeit in more of an unorthodox way, but they're still that's doing it. That's why I think art block is less about like the physical capacity to actually do it and it's more about the mental capacity it's to do it. getting in the right mindset to be able to make something, yeah? Yeah, because yeah. there is a huge difference between sitting down to draw and being in the mood to do it or feeling like you're forcing it. Yeah, forcing it. Oh, anything you do, they're not even art. If you feel like you've been forced to do something, of course it's going to turn out like not so great. Like, it, it's one thing if you're doing it because it's like a paid job and you have to sit down and do it and you might be having to sort of grind your teeth through it. But if that's how you're creating like all your personal art... You know, I bet, I bet there's some art YouTubers that feel that way sometimes. I think anyone who works in like the art industry, there'll be, always be like a day where you might think to yourself, not really feeling like drawing today, but that's like where my paychecks come. I think that's where a big part of like the argument around like art block comes, really comes into play. From. Yeah. But the thing is is that even if I've got like a paid gig on my hands that I need to be handling because, you know, I wanna keep like my rent going, I wanna keep like yes. electricity going, I want some food in my mouth. Yeah. I'll obviously produce art for that because it's like work. What I consider art block to be is when I sit down in my own free time and I say, What do I feel like drawing for myself right now? Yeah, you have yeah, you have like a free hour, you sit down, you have no other distractions, work obligations, anything. And if you are art blocked then in that moment, what's in what is in your head when that happens? Is it is there nothing? Is there like a panic or you know what I've got like different types of ones that can happen, so there's sometimes the one where I do think to myself, Oh, I'd love to draw right now but I don't quite have an idea. And I've got like a few tips and tricks around that which mm. maybe we can talk about in like another one where we talk about like art idea generation. Yeah, sure, yeah, that'd be fun, yeah. But because I want to focus more so around like the struggles of it with this one, yeah. there's definitely times where like I'm sat staring at like an empty page and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going through like lists of like ideas or Pinterest and nothing's like springing out to me as though it's inspiring me. It's like, I want to do that thing. I, like, I know I've got the desire to draw, but there's nothing that I feel like is like, there's nothing that I feel like I need to draw that the world particularly like needs or that I need right now or... Yeah, just nothing comes to you. 
That's kind of like how I am in a way, but I feel like more so when I'm art blocked, I'm more easily distracted. Like, yeah. I'll be sat there with a piece of paper and I'll be like, oh, wonder what's for dinner later. <laughs> a lot of the times I usually find, I also have like, we both have mental health issues going on. Oh, I have many problems here. <laughs> We're very open about that kind of stuff on the channel. Would you, would you like a list, a video list of the problems I have? <laughs> so, the state of, like, my mental health or, like, things that are going on in my personal life depend mm -hmm. on how stressful things are. Yeah, because, uh, you know, th that's, again, that feeds into every job and every life. Everyone has their problems and things that they're going through, and it does affect everything that you do. So, like, you art idea creation it's coming from your brain but if your brain's like secretly on fire and going like i am so stressed i can't cope you got some bills to pay yeah exactly <laughs> your most creative ideas sometimes might not be coming out the best then mm. that said when i was in like university i was so scared about like leaving university i was in like this adrenaline mode where i was just non-stop drawing all the time i stopped playing games i stopped watching any television i stopped doing anything that i enjoyed that wasn't but drawing that's gonna burn you out oh yeah you know I, I think a lot of people in like the art industry or like youtube to start off on those kind of tracks and that's where all the fuel's coming from because you're like yeah, yeah woo! i'm gonna do anything to make this career happen and then when it actually happens it's sort of like now what yeah because yeah oh, oh i've achieved it and the I desire didn't... is to achieve that thing when you've achieved that thing yep. are you still gonna not watch tv anymore are you still never gonna play a game ever again because that's gonna start it's, to get dull very it's like fast. being so laser focused on one thing that when you achieve it you realize that you didn't look past it mm -hmm. and then you can feel really lost again because you're like oh well, what, what do i do now but there was a video earlier on the uh jack septic i did where he was talking yeah. about he used to film two videos every single day every i don't day? know how the heck he did that <laughs> we burnt out on doing three videos a week three a week yes it granted was... we were doing like twitch live streams as well like in between there was you know a lot going on in life then and as well and stuff, there yeah. was yeah there was a lot of hospital appointments and stuff so you know for the sake of health we had to cut back alone and We've talked and played with the idea of doing maybe two a week one day and, you know, never say never, we might do that one day, but certainly there were big health implications that meant we had to cut back and I'm glad that we did because, yes, it's more of a struggle now, but we're healthier for it. Yeah, it's more of like, it's hard to put into words. When I compare the state of mind that I used to be in, oh, right. to me that was a way bigger struggle than what we're going through now. Oh, that's now, it. I mean, it's if... more of like a, a minor inconvenience yeah. versus before. I felt like I was on the verge of like keeling over and not we... being able to cope. Anymore. Your brain, your brain controls everything. If there's something wrong there, it's gonna leak into and affect like every aspect of your life. That's how we're gonna pick Creston. Oh yeah, with us. If you, yeah, guys. You know we've adopted Creston, right? <laughs> he's a very, he's a very vocal young man. He's got a lot of opinions of when it comes to art block. I think something though that like our culture in general kind of struggles with is opening up with like how we actually feel and if you think about it as an artist you've got to be somewhat in touch with like what you think about your own emotions emotions how you're yeah yeah because otherwise how are you pulling from like your imagination or how are you putting any kind of like emotion into what you're painting if you can't connect or understand that experience if you can't emote yourself, yourself kind of thing yeah yeah and I, th I think that is like a pretty big issue with people is that I even went through it definitely myself and a lot of therapy has helped me slowly sort of come out my shell. You know when people say, how are you doing? And you automatically say, I'm fine. I'm great. <laughs> but see, can... Tears down your face. <laughs> yeah, I'm <exactly>. great. <laughs> your house is flooded. <laughs> Everything's going wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but like so many of us, it's, I don't know, obviously I can't speak for every single place in the world, but in England, it's a very, we're almost like ingrained an autopilot to say are weak. <laughs> yeah no it's true it? you know the whole like suck it up and get on with it culture yeah and thing. i think there's that same attitude towards art block but art block is just like another place that exists within your mental health like oh i'm an artist for a living i can't be art blocked i'm fine or like when you get those people who bring up the children to not have any emotions and oh. the sort of like i don't experience sadness but then the very internally angry <laughs> a lot I, of the time. I'm so happy! <laughs> like, 
like anything in life, it's healthy to have a little bit of anything going on. Yeah. But when it's all of one thing or all of not one thing, that's when it can be unhealthy. So I see it as like a normal part of life to have art block going on every now and then. Yeah, And it's yeah, something totally. that you crawl out of every now and then, you get inspired with. I think if you're in a place where you're really, really struggling with art block, sometimes that can feel more like an art burn out. Yeah, and you gotta take a break, and in it, my opinion. Yeah, something I didn't realise about with like burnouts is that once you've like been running on adrenaline for so long, your energy levels start to get like so so low mm, to yeah, the point yeah. that you're gonna wear yourself out. There'll be a point where your body just wants to like sleep all the time. You'll be exhausted. <laughs> that's, that's a mood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a lot of people can probably relate to what it's like. And then it's gonna be a struggle to even do the things that your body needs you to do, such as like having a shower or eating a meal. Self care and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and then how are you meant to do things? Such as like drawing for fun, let alone drawing for like a job. How can you draw for fun if you need a shower? <laughs> <laughs> I'm stinky. <laughs> I'm a pro at doing that. <laughs> We're both a pro at stinky. God, thank God that YouTube hasn't got like a smell o vision thing yet. Especially Jeez. with this heat wave, Jesus oh my Christ. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've defined what we understand our block to believe. Yeah, our beliefs be. and what we think it is, yeah. Yeah, because everyone's going to have their own unique life experiences and, and let us know. definitions. Yeah. Let us know what you believe yeah. it to be. Down in the comment section, I would love to know, like, what is your own definition of art block? And even if you don't believe it, uh, you know, just d let's discuss about it, you know? Everyone's going to be different, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's healthy to have, like, conversations like this. Let's chat. Yeah, I, I don't want to feel like I'm pushing, like, my own opinions on anyone. Of course, no like, way, no way. I'm never that kind of person. If anyone ever has, like, a different opinion to what I believe, I'm all for hearing about it. Yeah, you're all valid and we love you. <laughs> so, I thought it might be a good idea if we talk about some of, like, our own experiences with Art Block. Oh, okay. Do any points stand out to you, like, in your life where you felt like you struggled with an art block more so than usual? Oh, I don't know if it, uh, I'll explain it to you. I don't know if it was block or frustration or what, but the first time you taught me how to draw, I felt like I'd definitely hit something because I felt like I wasn't improving, I wasn't enjoying, like, everything that I was making, and I was just drawing sort of... This is before YouTube as well. Drawing just sort of became, and it felt like a hassle because I felt like, oh, I wasn't improving. I don't like anything that I do. Yeah. And the first time that this is what I'm talking about, the first time that Steph was teaching me to draw, uh, that was when I gave up for a while mm -hmm. and then eventually came crawling back to you. So I don't know whether that was a block. It was certainly a lot of frustration. I think it's a similar thing because there's been this graph before that I've seen. I'll. If I can find it, if I'll we put can it find up, it, like, yeah, I know the one I'll you mean. I'll try explain it, but it was something that was talking about like art block mm. and how like you perceive like your own artwork and how you've like improved, and basically your perception, like how you look at artwork, you can spot things wrong in your artwork faster than oh. you can fix them. Christ, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like you know there's a problem, but you haven't quite developed the skills just yet to fix it. Mm -hmm. Then slowly over time, you catch up in your skills, you're like, okay, I've narrowed in what it is that's wrong with this, and I'm gonna fix it. And you go to fix it, and then for a while, there'll be like a mini high in your art progress while you'll be thinking to yourself. This is awesome! I'm making progress and this feels great. <laughs> I am the next Da Vinci, yes! <laughs> but then it all happens all over again where it feels like you're stagnating and you're never particularly stagnating. Your brain's always sort of like running. As long as you can pick faults in things. That's good. It, yeah. That's good. That means that your brain's like working ahead of things. Mm. If you're looking at your work and thinking, I don't really know how to find faults in this, um, that's going to be the answer to trying to find like progress. Exactly, yeah. It, never see it as a negative if you can always find mistakes and faults, because that means you're always improving. That's a good thing. I think some of like my biggest art blocks that come to mind, one was towards like the end of uh, secondary school. Uh, the closer that it was getting to like when we were going to be leaving, you know, you have to think about what you're going to do with the rest of your entire life when you're only like 15, 16. Which, which, you know, for, for a minute, if I can just go off course for a second, <laughs> no school teaches you that, no, no school makes you prepared for leaving school. It's like, I'm going to teach you what a triangle is and then send you out into the world and it's like, jeez. 
Nothing prepares you for that. How many people do you know you're on edge that have a clear idea of what career that they want to be doing even now? Or have needed what a parallelogram is. <laughs> Or a triangle. Well, maybe a triangle. But it just feels really intense that you're expected to make such a big decision when you're like 15. Yeah, or and no one, no one's there to help you. Or it, again, this is speaking from a lot my of own the time, experience. There's like really big financial implications of doing these things, like oh. student loans and the debt. Which, which you could be paying them. back for the rest of your life. <gasps> so it can be scary stuff. I think a lot of this is sort of like glossed over when big people time. talk about like leaving school and oh, stuff. Yeah, but yeah. To me, that was like a huge point in my life where I experienced a really big like art block. And I think a big part of that was me looking at sort of like where my art skills currently were and where I imagined I needed to be, because I didn't even know how to get a job in art. They don't really tell you how to do that. I didn't discover that until I was in my twenties and even yeah. then it's not very like mm. clear. And I had no clue until I'd like met you, so. It's a very confusing like path to follow. I think it's like that with a lot of the arts. Yes, yeah, I it, agree. It's not like it's like um, something where a job listing comes up on like job.com lol. <laughs> <laughs> Come to job.com. We've got artist jobs falling out our butts. <laughs> you know, now that we're touching on this, there was a point where we were in school. I was in my final year of school and they said to prepare us for our futures. We needed to go on a job hunting website <laughs> and search the position that we'd be interested in. Mm -hmm. I typed an artist and no results came up. And I remember that being a big moment of like, <laughs> oh no, what have I got myself in for you? Teacher, I have found a problem. Meanwhile, the kid next to me was like, whoa, dentists make loads of money. I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to draw people's faces for a living. And that's when I had like one of my first crises and maybe that contributed to my art block. <laughs> I think that's really cute. Uh, you're like, that's when I had my first breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a lot also going on in my life as well at the time. And I think that coupled with it, like art was the only thing that was bringing me personal joy. But suddenly yeah. there was this huge pressure to be like, Art's only worth pursuing if you're going to make money from it, mm. which is it's such a toxic way of Some thinking. people, some people do thrive off that, and you know that's if that if you do, cool. You know that's mm -hmm. that's you. You know you do you. But Steph and I definitely are the kind of person where it would get old really fast. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's not it's not for us basically, and I think that's reflected in the type of videos and stuff that we make. Yeah, we could make videos that we're like oh yeah that'll get pushed out oh man, 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 money money but at the same time we'd be like <laughs> sound but, like the cookie monster <laughs> oh, money for cookie money monster money monster <laughs> but like, oh god emily said in that podcast that i sounded like a muppet <laughs> and you're not helping things here but what i'm trying what i'm trying to get at is it would make us sad it would make us fed up it would burn us out doing those things because we wouldn't enjoy them I know, I sometimes, because like, whenever we have consultations with YouTube, they're like, here's like content that's trending. Do that this, you, you be idiot. Doing. <laughs> and you know, you see everyone else touching on those topics and they're all taking off and doing a lot better financially. That's great, that's great. We have no problems with that. It feels like whenever I try it, I'm like, oh, I just, I can't force myself to, to enjoy do something that I don't enjoy. And we don't. And I feel like we're happier. We're poorer for it. <laughs> but I feel like we're... <laughs> Cash rich in happiness and morals, aren't we then? <laughs> but that's just us. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Some people enjoy chasing, you know, the big bucks. And that's okay. But it's just not for us. Yeah, like, I've had quite a few people in, like, my day-to-day -day life who've come up to me and been like, you know, you've got, like, a fairly biggish audience here. Do you know if you uploaded this often? Or if you had, like, a shop? Or if you did... What if you took in a sponsorship from all these companies? They're all asking you <laughs> an email. People leaning in like, have you heard about Skillshare? It's like, <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. Everybody <laughs> has heard about Skillshare. <laughs> probably doing any favours, but when we were in university, we were all given a free subscription to Skillshare. I never once logged into it. <laughs> you're allowed, honey. <laughs> it's time to be less felted, you know. And you're entitled to be like, Skillshare never helped me get where I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not me calling out Skillshare. I've, I've literally never used no, it, so no, I don't know. We're not, <laughs> we're not spilling tea on anyone, no. But who knows, maybe that is the the ultimate path for some people. What, Skillshare? <laughs> yeah, it might be. Whoa. That might be the answer to a lot. That, that sounds like a sponsor. Well, a lot of YouTubers have reached Nirvana, haven't they? <laughs> 
<laughs> the amount of adverts I see for it. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I needed to vent. I can tell. <laughs> I worry when we talk about stuff like this because everyone's gonna run like a YouTube channel everyone's in a different, different way to what yeah. we do. We're, all we are doing is sharing our our, own, our opinion. That's our own all sort it is. Of, like rule book when yeah. we make. We're decisions. not saying that you have to do this or if you do this, you're a bad YouTuber or a person. Not at all. This is just yeah, our experience. So, for example, um, Emily is a channel that we did that podcast with recently. Oh yeah, Emily. And awesome. she sometimes takes on sponsorships. And with the kind of content that she does, there's quite a lot of it that can get like mo demonetized. Yes. So I think it like makes sense that she reaches out to people who can help her content be monetized. Yeah, to help offset if YouTube does demonetize it, which you know I'd be more on board for. You know, this is your living. Jeez, you have to be able to be prepared if they do say, "Ah, oh, we're not monetizing that one." And then there's other people like our friend Mott. He does quite a lot of um, subscriptions. He does a lot of sponsorships. Yes, Mott does, yeah. And Mott's great. Yeah, and he's like a smaller creator. He's taken on like quite a few different like companies that he's working with. It helps him get by. He usually likes the product that he's using. So. And again, that's two people that have found ways to make a living out of the things that they enjoy. Yeah, I think that's what it's about. Though. Mm. It's finding your own sort of moral compass and working off that. Off that, yeah. Whereas, I think where it can start to be like really dodgy territory is when you sometimes see it where there'll be like a creator who's sort of like, man, I hate this product, this product sucks. Then this product comes along and like, hey, we'll give you $500. And then they're like, wow, this is great. Look at all my YouTube videos. <laughs> you say this video sucks, but my friend George Washington says different. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I personally have issues with that kind of stuff. And again, that's like, ex that's exactly what you said. It's just... Different people have different morals, and that's cool. That's fine. I think one of my things that I struggle with, like, personally... Wow, I'm really just touching on all kinds of, like, art topics right now. We're just struggling with everything. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just life? Life is a struggle. <laughs> right, I think where my own personal struggle with it is that... If I was watching, like, a TV show or something, especially when I think of myself as, like, a kid or, like, a younger person, because we had to do a lot of, like, um, in university, a lot of stuff about the ethics of advertising. Oh, and, okay, yeah. Uh, that's probably had, like, a really heavy implication on decisions that I make. Yes. About, like, where money comes from and... <laughs> Like, what's the price for the money that you get in, like, in return? And it makes me overthink everything because I had to do so many dissertations and stuff on it. You can't Just... relate. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, Adam's got a completely different life experience to me in that kind of respect. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it but a life, but... <laughs> if you think way, way back, I think Friends used to be sponsored by, like, Apple Tizer. The beginning of like the shows would be like a little thing that'd be like ah appetizer. <laughs> kind of like on YouTube where they're like ah Skillshare. Not quite. That's why I want to sort of okay explain like the difference. Educate me, hun. So imagine if like you had Ross and Rachel and Joey literally at the beginning of an episode being like <laughs> Guz hi <laughs> guzzling we love appetizer, appetizer. <laughs> reading a oh, script. So refreshing. <laughs> I think that's where I struggle with it because it's one I don't mind. Um, if we have like mid-roll ads or like ads before or after our content, they can say or do whatever they want, you know, that's not us saying it. We have no but control over that. I feel uncomfortable with bringing an advertisement into the video itself. Oh, okay. Like yeah. imagine yeah. if um, you're watching Peppa Pig and Peppa Pig starts like rambling on about how much she loves like Diet Cork or something. <laughs> <laughs> Good gosh, I am parched. I would love some Diet Cork. <laughs> It's not to say that it's necessarily wrong. You see it in like movies quite a lot where there's heavy product placement, where there's like a really big brand label everywhere. <laughs> oh, which one's the one that's really good at it? There was um, a movie that we watched and there was a lot of... Oh, it was Hotel Transylvania That's too. the one, yeah. Oh there my god. There was Sony product placement everywhere. Yeah, and I've heard the Emoji movie's very good at product placement as well. But it's not a very good movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's very bad at product placement, shall we say, because there's so much of it in there. <laughs> but yeah, sure, I get, I get what you're saying. And like I was saying, that's not to say that those things are necessarily wrong. Does that mean it's bad? Okay, so this person, you in return you get some money, Peppa Pig, advertise yeah, like, some Coca-Cola. I suppose a good question to ask you guys is, 
Are you guys okay? What? Not, not even with necessarily art videos, but YouTube in general. Are you guys okay watching the video, unknowing that there's going to be like a big slapped ad in your face? Well, in England. Well, they um, have to. Yeah, yeah, here we have. We to have tell very, you. very strict laws here, so. Um, any English person you see that's going to be doing some kind of a sponsorship, we're not even allowed to call it a sponsor or a sponsorship. We have to put hashtag ad. In the thumbnail and the title. I yeah, think. yeah. Mm. especially in like the title, it's got to be there. Ad or like advertise. In fact, I don't think it can even be ad anymore. I think it's got to be advertisement. Advertisement. Yeah. <laughs> They're really trying to sort of... There goes the first line of the title. That's and a big word. To me, like, as soon as I see that word, like, a YouTube video that says advertisement... I'm switched off by I know, it too. I, I don't click yeah, it, I don't, I'm not I don't interested. Like it, yeah. And I, I guess that makes me feel sort of, like, guilty because, like, there's other people who are, like, friends or, like, content creators. Like, if it's someone that I really, really want to go out, like, my way to support, and support course, I'll of course. still go put, like, that video on and watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But for, like, the average YouTuber, I, I don't think I'd go out my way to click on hashtag advertisement. And, let, guys, let us, again, let us know. What would you do in that situation? Because I just think it'd be interesting to see. It's not like if all you guys are like, oh, yeah, I'd watch it anyway. Next video is doodle day. Hashtag advertisement. <laughs> ah, Diet Coke. I learned how to open this can with my subscription of Skillshare. Yes. <laughs> we won't do that. <laughs> you know, in England as well, you've also got to say when a product is gifted. That's like another word. There's advertisement and gifted. Yeah, gift stuff. That's a big grey area. That's pain in the butt. The, like, literally the government have started to like crack down on this kind of stuff. You've received a gift? <laughs> Tell us! Everyone. Time to tax you now! <laughs> But I can understand that we've went into it in like a different video before hmm. where there are a lot of like morals and eth eth ethics. The like. ethics and morals of stuff. But that again is, God, that's a big can of worms because everyone's different. That's what we were talking about with Art Block. We've come full circle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically a lot of things in art, which I guess it makes sense, all come down to the perception of like the person because the way that you make something you see it all the time with fine art like someone will draw like a flower or something one person will look at it and be like oh my god that's such a beautiful flower and they'll take it very literally then there'll be like that crazy fine art teacher who's like damn that represents like fiery passion and <laughs> this reminds me of my teenage years when i came into bloom <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah and it, that's fine there's nothing wrong with either of those but that's actually like one of my favorite things about the creative kind of fields how you, how you can draw something and everyone will look at it different and that's great that's really cool and vice versa if you said to like a classroom full of people here is like um a vase of like flowers or something you can all interpret in your own way go and draw it no two pictures will come back looking exactly the of same. Of course not, no way, because everyone sees things differently. And like, I'm colorblind, I see things differently. It would totally suck if everyone's pictures came back the same, or half of them came back, like, you could literally put them over on top of each other, and it was like line for line the same drawing. <laughs> You've been tracing these, haven't you? Because for that to happen, that would mean that all those people have had the exact same life experiences, completely agree on everything that happens within their lives had no disagreements about anything ever. We are robots. That would be a very, very dull way of living. And essentially, that's what Art Block is too. I think, you know, based on different people's mm -hmm. experiences. With yeah. It, like an experience I think I've had that maybe makes my perception of it different is that I broke my right wrist when I was younger and it was in a cast. Yeah, I, rem I remember. I yeah. felt extremely creative during that time. I wouldn't say that I was art blocked even though I had a cast on. And I it's like you had a challenge and you wanted to rise yeah, to that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I was still trying to draw like with my left hand. Granted, it wasn't looking anywhere near as good as what I could do with my right hand, but I was so excited to get that cast off so that I could like have full control. So you could draw again. again. Yeah, yeah. You wanted to o overcome that challenge that you had, yeah. Whereas there's been points in my life where I've had full capable working functioning wrists and art supplies and everything else that I'd need to draw, but my mind's just been in such like a junky place. It takes you back to that blank piece of paper and you're just like, I can't, I am not in a position already to fill that page. And I think sometimes the tips to sort of overcome in that kind of feeling when it happens is like taking a step back. It's like to break your wrist. No, not break your wrist. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> um, I think it comes down to, like we were saying, the whole like self care thing, because I think we put like such a huge priority on drawing that we forget that we're people, we're basically like little robots that need our own oil and maintenance and functioning 
Yeah. Yeah, no, totally, and yeah. If we don't, it's sort of like, if you don't put oil in the car, it's not going to work. Exactly. Yeah. If, if, you, if you take the engine out, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the human body is just the same. So if you're looking at drawing as like the product of a car moving, there's other steps that need to be taken first before you can make that happen. Yeah. You can't just like get on the bonnet of a car and flop like a fish and expect it to go. <laughs> there are steps that you need to yeah, be able to do. They're not quite like magic carpets. Not <laughs> yeah. yet, anyway. Go, you... go magic carpet. <laughs> There'll be one like announced like the day after this release. <laughs> By Skillshare. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> what are we gonna do now? So guys, um, this is obviously a little bit different, but as we've discussed, different is often good and shouldn't be feared. And it excites us. It excites me, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe guys, and we'll see you for more videos soon. Hopefully when this heat wave has gone away. Doodle pod. Pod doodle. No, not pod doodle. <laughs> I'm gonna leave before Steph does break my wrists. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs>